Welcome to City Skylines The Dev Diaries. These videos take a closer look at the official Dev Diaries that can be found at the Paradox Interactive Forum and I'll include a link to them in the video description. In this episode we'll be looking at outside connections. In City Skylines every city needs to be connected to the outside world and outside connections provide you with two significant benefits. The first is the ability to import and export goods and the second is tourism. We're going to be taking a closer look at both of these topics starting with importing and exporting. When you're talking in terms of tax revenues the most efficient city possible would not only produce all of its own natural resources and goods but also consume them. So if that's true why would we want to import and export? Well all industry buildings need at least a small amount of natural resources in order to produce goods. The goods are then sold in commercial areas. Now natural resources can be produced by your city but only by specialized industry which isn't unlocked when you first start a city. So to get your industry up and running you're going to need to import resources and that means you need to be connected to a highway. The same is also true for power plants. Now, Power plants prefer to get resources like oil and coal from inside the city but if you're not producing a particular resource or not enough of it the plant will just order what it needs from outside the city. Now although it's true that you get the most efficient tax income from a city that supplies and consumes all resources locally there are other factors to consider. So for example do you really want to deal with the pollution caused by a local oil industry? The thing I like is it's your choice. You can play your city however you like. Maps will usually have several highway connections available and the starting tile will always offer at least one. Some starting tiles have the highway running right through them while others just have stubs that you can connect to. And it's worth mentioning that all the highways, intersections and stubs can be bulldozed so that you can have them exactly where and how you want. And a big thank you to John at Paradox for supplying these exclusive images of the highway and rail connections. Thanks John. Oh one quick tip, industrial areas will always get the heaviest traffic so make sure you give them good highway connections. As well as importing resources, highways allow you to export excess goods. But all those delivery trucks will eventually put a strain on your road systems so you'll want to take advantage of trains and ships when they become available to you. Once you have a harbour or a train connection, you can have the trucks only operate between the industry buildings and the harbour or train station allowing you to control exactly where your heavy traffic is going. And I don't know about you guys but this is ticking a lot of boxes for me. Supplying commercial buildings inside the city is always the first priority. Your commercial buildings will order goods and industry always ships to them first but if their stockpiles are full goods will automatically be exported to the outside world. Now the other big user of your outside connections are tourists. Tourists can use a variety of transportation options but in a new city the only option will be the highways. You'll always have tourists coming to your city but just how many depends on how attractive your city is. Attractiveness can be raised by having high land values and also by having monuments. Now monuments are something the devs seem pretty excited about. Monuments can be buildings, parks, plazas, statues and you earn them by reaching various goals in the game. For example when your city has produced a thousand units of goods you'll gain access to the stadium of many things. Once available you'll be free to place the building anywhere in your city. And as well as making local citizens happy, it also draws in tourists. And monuments will obviously need to be well serviced by public transport to prevent your roads from getting too busy. Tourists come to your city to see the sights, 
and to shop. And they can be a great source of tax income because tax is paid for every unit of goods sold. That means you'll want to make it easy for tourists to get to your commercial areas so they can spend, spend, spend. Tourists can arrive by ship, airplane, train or by car. And for tourists who are not coming by car, public transport will be very important. The better they can get around, the more money they tend to spend, which means more tax revenue. Building monuments and providing good public transportation is the key to a successful tourism industry. OK, so you're probably thinking, yeah, monuments are cool, but they're nothing new. Ah, well, there's more. Monuments are grouped into five skill trees, and these skill trees are pathways to gaining the ultimate buildings. Wonders. Wonders are massive buildings that completely remove one need from the city. But we'll be talking more about that in another Dev Diary. Now the devs have said that different monuments are suited for different playing styles. So you can pick your favourites, play in that style and eventually gain the coveted wonder. And I have to say, I'm pretty excited to hear more about that whole topic of Monuments and Wonders. Well, that's it for Outside Connections. I'd like to thank Carolina for putting together the original Dev Diary. I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this vid, hit the like button, or better still, leave me a comment. And I'll see you for Episode 6, where we'll be looking at the Map Editor.